Hey traders, welcome to another video in this long course about options. This is the second video in the series. The first one was an introduction. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, I strongly recommend that you see it because I've included a lot of the basics in the first video that I believe is very important for you to follow up with the coming uh, topics and subjects. Um, l let me first get the legal stuff out of the way. Please make sure to read the disclaimer before proceeding. Um, in brief, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos represent my own understanding and opinion about the topics presented. These are not recommendations of any sort. All the information and data presented are from sources believed to be accurate, but accuracy is not guaranteed. So with this out of the way, let's get started. So today we are going to start with a quick review about what we discussed in the first video. Then, what are options strategies characteristics? What do I need to look for when choosing which strategy, uh, strategy to trade? What is implied volatility? What is expected move? And finally, we'll have closing notes. Okay, the basics. First thing I said is options give you options and options are a derivative I explained what do I mean by derivatives the underlying which is the asset that you trade when you buy or sell an options contract it could be any anything options buyers has have the right but not the obligations to exercise the terms of the options on or before the expiry date options sellers have the obligation to fulfill the options terms when getting assigns assigned there are two styles of options there is an american style and european style an American style, you could exercise the option contract anytime. European style, the option contract could be exercised only on the last expiration date of the contract. I'll move quickly so I don't waste the time of those who watched the first video. We have mainly two types of options. We have call option and put option when you buy a call or a put you have the right to buy the underlying if it was a call or to sell the underlying if it was a put if a predefined quantity at a predefined price which is called the strike price on or before a predefined date if you sell options call or put you have the obligation to sell the underlying if you sell a call and to buy the underlying if you sell a put again same terms the predefined quantity predefined price on or before a predefined date and then we check the specifications of an option contract we said that the first thing that need to be specified is it a call or a put what's the underlying a symbol of the underlying if it was a stock an index or a commodity or anything and then the strike price 
and finally the last trading day of the counter. We went over the Greeks and I'm going to repeat this real quickly because this is uh, important that we know them by heart. The first one we had was the delta is the amount by which an options price will change for a one point change in the underlying price. The second one is theta is the amount by which an options price will decrease every day, decay every day. Then the gamma, the amount of change in delta, notice here, it's not change in the options price. Gamma is the amount of change in delta for a one point change in the underlying price. So gamma affects delta. The rest of the Greeks affects the option price. Then we have Vega and they said V as in volatility, Vega volatility. So it's the amount by which an option price will change for a 1% change in volatility. And finally the Rho, the amount by which an options price will change for a 1% change in interest rates. Okay, so far. Now we start with a new subject, which is options strategy characteristics. And in my opinion, this is a very important slide because based on this slide, you will be able to choose which options contract to trade wisely. You need to know why you are choosing this specific options contract. The first thing that you need to decide is which direction. Are you bullish on this specific stock, for instance? Are you bearish or are you neutral? You are indifferent. You think that this stock will be range bound for the coming 30 days or 90 days. What's your risk tolerance for the trade? Do you have limited risk or you are willing to accept unlimited risk? When we, when we go through the option strategies, you will see that some strategies, the risk is limited either by the amount of premium you paid or by combining uh, some legs of options in, in, in a specific way that your risk you will be limited. You know that your maximum loss is this amount. It's uh, $10 or $1,000. The, the, the reward you are looking for, the, the, the profit, again, is it limited or unlimited? If you sell a call and you got a premium of $5 times 100 stocks, so your maximum profit, your maximum reward is $500, but you have unlimited risk. Again, when we go into details uh, in options strategies, we will see this very clearly. Then the volatility. When we, when we discuss uh, volatility and then uh, time, it's important to note that the, the, the discussion is always compared to benefiting the position. In other words, if the volatility is negative, so this means that high volatility will harm the position, will have a negative effect on the position. Same applies for time. As I said in the last video, sometimes you'll have a positive theta, which means that time would be in your favor. So same thing applies when you compare the, the, the theta, the time, to the position is it benefiting the position? If the sign is negative, then 
time is not in your favor. If it's positive, then time it's in your favor. I I I I take these these specifications, these characteristics as a kind of questionnaire when I'm when I'm when I want to take a new options position and first thing I ask myself what's my opinion about this stock or index or commodity do I think it's going up or in a range what's my risk tolerance in this in this trade what kind of profit I'm looking for? Uh, what's my expectations for the v uh, uh, volatility? Um, how how is time going to affect me? So it's something like a questionnaire to filter what are the options that you may trade. Okay, so far. Now implied volatility. It's very important to distinguish between volatility and implied volatility. Volatility is a measure of the variability in the daily prices of the underlying of the stock over one year, per one year period. This is the same as the prices standard deviation. Talking about prices here, I didn't mention anything about returns okay just the prices so it's you let's say that you have the hundred and uh, 252 closing price for stock Microsoft you calculate the standard deviation you get the mean you subtract each closing price from the mean you square them, you divide by the number of samples, you get the variance, you take the square root, you have the standard deviation. Very simple, nothing new here. If, if you know the basics of statistics, this is very simple. When, we, when you compute the standard deviation, you may use any period you want. You can have the closing price for the whole year, you can you might be interested in finding the standard deviation for only three, the past three months for a stock and so on but if you want to compare the volatility with the market's implied volatility those have to match because the implied volatility is generated from the options pricing model models and in their calculation uh, it's based on annual figures so the the implied volatility that you get it's an annual uh, volatility an annual standard deviation so the standard deviation the regular standard deviation that you compute for um, your stock it has to be annual so you could compare apple to apple as i said implied volatility this is the output when you when you use options pricing models you put inputs variables to get a theoretical price for the call and the put you use the historical volatility. Now you got prices for the calls and the puts. Okay. We have an options pricing model. In this model, you have variables that you input in these models. And the output is the options price. Remember, we said this last time. This is the output now we have a theoretical price from let's say black and Scholes model and at the same time we have price in the options chain
you see the difference we have two prices here this price is calculated from the black and Scholes models and we have a different price that you find in the option chain this is the market price you could get any amount uh, any theoretical amount from the black and Scholes. this doesn't mean that anyone is going to sell to you with this price or buy from you with this price so you input this this price now you want to find the implied volatility this this what you want to to understand what's what is the market implying what's the market expectations about the move that might happen on this particular stock so you'll forget about this and you will input the market prices sorry in this black and Scholes model and the output this would be the output you see the difference the first one or how we use black and Scholes. the purpose is to use an options pricing model to get the price you get the price it's the theoretical price here and then you compare it with the market price this is market price you'll find this in the options chain we are going to see uh, all this now I'm just trying to clarify exactly what what we are doing when you see difference between the theoretical price and the market price so this means that the inputs used in this model for example the black and Schultz are different where would the difference come from the mean variability is in the implied volatility because implied volatility it's the variation in the price over a specific period of time so the market is anticipating a different scenario than what the historical volatility is saying this is what you're trying to figure out so you will use the market option pricing from the option chain and you input this in the black and shorts and the output is the implied volatility okay so implied volatility is computed it's estimated not actually estimated but yet yeah, it's, it's it's computed it's a percentage that's computed from an option pricing model such as black and shorts for example when we use options market prices as inputs that's why it's implied implied by the market okay let's see an example assume that we have stock XYZ and it's a hundred dollars and the implied volatility is 20% so what does this mean it means that the market is expecting a range for the price of this stock XYZ to be plus or minus 20% throughout the year this implied volatility of 20% as we said it's annual and it's equivalent to the standard deviation so this 20% plus or minus equal one standard deviation so based on statistics we are 68% certain that within one year the price of stock XYZ will be between 80 and 120 68 
percent certainty, probability. Okay, if we want to know the two standard deviation range, we multiply the IV by 2, so it's going to be 40%, and we do the same thing. So the market is implying that this stock prices range based on two standard deviation, this equal to two standard deviation, to be between 60 and 140 dollars, now with 95% certainty, 95% probability, we are certain 95% that during the coming year, stock XYZ price will be bound between 60 and 140. Same thing for three standard deviation, I don't want to repeat myself, but You'll do the same thing, it will be between 40 and 160, and it's 99.75% certainty. All these calculations are annual expectation. The anticipated range is one year. Okay. Next, the implied expected move. The title says implied, so we are using the prices of the market to know what's the, what's the implied range for the stock during this coming period. We'll see when we, how we can... Um, uh, check the, the, the different periods if we have a stock that's going uh, an option that's going to expire after one week or 30 days or six months how we can calculate this expected range okay let's see how we can uh, uh, check this expected move and we'll use real time please pay attention because because this could be very confusing okay Let's assume that we are interested in Netflix. So this is the option chain of Netflix. And we I saw that the earnings are on the 15th of July, as you can see here. So I'm going to check the options for 16th of July and see what I have. Look here at the implied volatility for 16th of July for the puts and for the calls. It's around 29%. Anyhow, if you compare this, I think if we assume that the implied volatility is 29, uh, I think it's a fair assumption. Um, we are looking at the 500, the price, the last Netflix, last is 500.71, so we look at the 500. Let's calculate the market expected move for Netflix for the option expiry 16th of July. First, let me say a quick word about the 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 one sigma the one standard deviation and the 68 percent and all this stock prices are known as log normal because they cannot go to zero so it it will be something like this this distribution is defined by the mean mu and the variance the sigma squared, the variance. We have, if this is one sigma, this is sigma, there is 68% 
that the price would be within this this range and this is maybe two sigma and so on this is two sigma and this is 95 percent this this what i mean by the range okay this is clear it's a it's a it's a, a log normal because it the stock prices cannot go minus so the maximum that could happen is the company would go bankrupt it will be zero so that's why it's not the regular uh, bell shape it's 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 skewed to the right but anyhow this is not the scope of this video okay the implied volatility figure represents an annual range as i said so annual standard deviation so this should be recalculated in a way to represent the expected range for a specific period of time you remember netflix expiry was 53 days and the implied volatility 29 percent this is what we saw on the option chain okay now i could argue about this but what i'm going to represent this is this is how i calculated i mean some people calculated it differently but i'll i'll, I'll tell you why i calculated like this and then it's up to you to decide any move in any stock happens during a trading day there is approximately 250 trading day step number one as we are going to see is we get the daily implied volatility this 29 percent is is equal to the the price of netflix it was 500 if you multiply 500 by say 30 percent it's 150 up 150 down roughly speaking so the market is saying that netflix could net netflix range during the year could be between 350 and 650 minus 150 this is minus 150 and this is plus 150 if this is 30 percent 30 percent times 500 equal 150 plus and minus this is how you calculate the range minus 150 plus 150 okay so now we have 53 days what do we do let's first calculate the expected daily move daily range for netflix i'll explain what i have here this is our stock and this is the implied volatility that we got from the option chain and we have 53 days to expire okay I'll, I'll take it step by step so please pay attention now we have this is 252 this is trading days in one year about 252 253 251.5 um, used 252 so the first step is very simple you have the implied volatility of 29%. You divide it by the square root of 252. You will get 1.83. This is straightforward. I V over square root 252 equal daily implied volatility this is the daily implied volatility you multiply this 
by the price. This is the daily expected move, plus and minus. It gives you this range daily. The market is expecting Netflix on daily basis to move up or down $9. The option we are looking at is 53 has 53 days to expire. So this daily move is not, I mean, this is not what I need to know. I need to know that within this 53 days, what is the market expectations or his prices implying what range for Netflix. So this is where, you know, I, so this is how it's important that you know how to calculate it so it makes sense. I'll explain to you why. <coughs> we, we got a daily IV based on 252 trading days in a year. When we want to calculate this 53, from a daily IV, this 53, we should only include the trading days in the 53. Some people would just take this amount or actually with the 53, they would do the price times IV times square root of 53 over 365. This this what I put here, by the way. This is, is this amount. You could you could try it and you'll get okay after you multiply by the price this by this is it's 55 you could double check but this is not accurate maybe the difference is very small but this is not accurate in my opinion this is more accurate this one because it takes into account the number of working days or trading days in this 53 and how how do you calculate this for this 40 i i counted them i counted the days to get the exact figure and this was the implied volatility for the 53 days and this was the expected move in each direction and this was the range between 442 to 557. Okay. Another way that you could use is you divide the 252 by the 365 and you multiply by the 53. You would get here, uh, I think it was 37 days based on this ratio you will get the same ratio there is 73 days in 53 there is 70 37 trading days in 53 days in the year there are 252 trading days in 365 days same concept this would lead to the same same number here of course this this makes sense it's it's the same thing just the way the way that you get it but in my opinion counting the the real trading days is more accurate because the stock is going to move on a day where there is trading this is my opinion but it's up to you to to use whichever you prefer so based on this from the prices of Netflix on the, let me go back here so I may take some notes. Um, the, the prices from the, the chain for the coal 
it was 23.36 and the price for the put was 21.85 this was July 16 expire the the sum is 45.21 if you are buying in one direction this is something else but you don't have the 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 68 percent certainty will not be useful to you because the 68 percent certainty remember the graph it's in both directions let me tell let me explain exactly what i mean the implied range by the market was 45.21. Here we have the expected move is $55 in each direction and this is 57 in each direction. Based on the straddle strategy and this what typically the market price, the straddle, which is you buy buy call at 500 buy put at 500 both of them add the money this is going to cost you let's say 45 dollars this is based on the last price for for both so your break even the stock price is 500 for you to break even it has to go to 545 over and 454 this is the range within this range you will not make any profit. It has to go higher than that or higher than that. The market is implying a range of 442 and 557. So based on the market pricing, you have 68% chance that you are going to make a profit from this straddle. This is based on the mathematics, on the statistics. Can you see that? We are going to do a lot of these examples when we start digging deeper into uh, the option strategies. But for now, you just need to understand the, the, the concept, the idea. When we dig deeper into option strategies, we are going to do a lot of these calculations. Because what I said in this video today, these are very important before you take any trade. If you remember, the the option strategy characteristics these are very important that before you start you look at these what's your direction your risk tolerance the profit expectations how would the volatility affects your position how time affects your position and then you take a decision are you going to proceed with the trade or not if you say, okay, I'm going to trade, then you, you start to check the prices that are available in the market. Is it good prices or bad prices? Let's assume that Netflix, the Netflix, uh, Netflix price range, uh, just for the sake of argument, was uh, between 460 and 500. 
during the past year this was the range of Netflix so it doesn't make sense that you pay $45 to buy a straddle a directionless option strategy a neutral option strategy hoping that Netflix would go in, in either way over $45 because it didn't happen during the past year so why would it happen now is is uh, high volatility is, is uh, it's expected there is earning coming there is big announcement there is whatever this is how you judge and also remember that everything is by probability nothing is certain when we say uh, the one standard deviation is 68 percent with 68 percent certainty there is 32 percent that it might not happen um, you could see stocks that uh, its prices go over three standard deviation which is the the the, the three standard deviation is 99.72 there is a 99 percent This is the price again. If this is the this is the mean and this is the standard deviation. And you would see prices are here and it's not like one example or two incidents or no, it's it's very common that you see spikes in in some stocks that would exceed the 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 three standard deviation and the four standard deviation you could see this by plotting the the bollinger bands bollinger bands on a chart and change the settings from two standard deviation put it three put it four Play with it and check the charts. You will see that this is very common. Not not very common. I mean, it's not like always, but this happens. So you are trying to get into a trade in an options trade with a higher pro probability in your favor, which is the 68% the one standard deviation. Okay, I think I've covered everything I wanted to say. I try to explain volatility and implied volatility yes another point um, the historical volatility and the implied volatility it's normal that they converge and diverge and this creates trading op opportunity we will see this when we discuss option strategies i just uh, thought of mentioning it just here that historical volatility and implied volatility converge and diverge understanding volatility is extremely important when choosing which option strategy to use market makers make market for options by creating bids and asks and for them to price the options correctly so they don't lose money they don't sell options cheaply or offer to 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 buy or buy options expensively they want to price the options fairly with minimum risk they must have some expectations about the up the stocks price expected move in both directions during a period of time and this is the market's implied move or range and it's again i'm repeating the same point again it's important to be aware of this range before initiating any option straight i believe that after this video uh, i think that 
I covered all the basics uh, and we should be ready to move another step further and start options strategies. Uh, on the next video I'm going to discuss long calls and long puts and hopefully I'll, I'll do covered call as well depending how much time uh, they took. Okay, thank you very much everyone. Good luck and have a great day.